welcome to yet another video of code from scratch so so proud of you for showing up today the work that you're putting in today is going to really help you in the long run i assure you i guarantee that the fact that you're sitting today and you're studying a tutorial you're watching the video you're either learning a new concept or you're revising the new concept you're going to sit and code you're going to practice this is going to set you apart this is going to help you crack some good interviews and i assure you that the fact that you're putting in your time and your hard work today is going to help you in long run i want you to believe that okay so today what we are going to do is we are going to finally start writing some code of recursion but before we get started there is one thing that i want to make very very clear recursion is a topic where you can't go like oh i have solved all the test cases i have passed all the test cases i have solved the problem i'm good to go i can move ahead it is not that topic i can tell you this because i have myself experienced a lot of time interviewers go like you know what please write this code using one function or don't use this plug or can you just not pass this uh, why are you passing this by reference don't do this don't do that interviewers will try to confuse you and this is why when we solve today's question although it might seem like a simple question i want you to think about how you can write the most optimized code that your interviewer will like the most that will take least space that is going to be most optimized so we are going to focus on that let's get started so the question says that you are given a number and what you have to do you have to keep reducing the number by 5 so you have to keep printing ai minus 5 for ai plus 1 will be equal to ai minus 5 till ai is greater than 0 basically you will keep subtracting 5 5 5 till you reach a negative value you did 0 and after that you are going to start increasing 5 like after that you are going to do ai plus 1 equal to ai plus 5 till you become ai equal to n okay what are the points to notice over here see since you are going to increase from the value that was the least that you found like in this case it is minus 4 in this case it is 0 so when you start increasing it back you are going to again come back to the same value right so if you started from 16 you will come back to 16 if you started from 10 you will come back to 10 so that is the first thing i know the first instinct that is going to be there is it's so simple question we can just use two for loops right but no the question it is given to us without using any loop and yeah interviewer can also tell you that and yeah this is going to set your basics right so you have to do this without using any loop so this is the first thing now what is the second thing that will come to your mind that okay what i can do is instead of writing two loops i can write two recursive functions now why two recursive functions one will be for the decreasing part and one will be for the increasing part now there will be some one more uh, intelligent person and the person will say that you know what instead of writing two recursive functions what i'm going to do is i'm going to write only one recursive function and i'm going to pass a flag that okay first reduce the value and then increase the value so the way i deal with the function will be different when i reduce the value and it will be different when i increase the value but okay first before going ahead let me revise this so one person can say that okay i can write using for loop then i said that okay Uh, do it without using loops then you said that okay i can write it using two recursive functions then i said that okay don't use two recursive functions use only one recursive function then you said okay you know what i'm going to pass a flag and i'm going to treat it like two different functions only because i'll put that if and else while i check in the flag so now what we'll do is first we will write this code the one with the flag and the one with one function then after that what we are going to do is we are going to try writing the code without any flag without using the while loop and guys as we keep moving ahead i want you to keep thinking of the five things that we had talked about recursion why are we using recursion over here because we can divide our problems into smaller problems okay so what are the smaller problems here identify that and when we solve the question you also have to draw the recursive tree and recursive stack you have to do this in recursion questions there is no other way you have to do it let's start writing some code now so we know that we have to return a vector so we will at least make one vector and this is the vector that we have to return also okay now let's start writing a recursive function so what are we going to do we are going to return void we are just calling it like a helper function recursive helper function you can just name it anything for now okay what all what all things are we going to need it okay first important thing not to note over here we have to add the values in this vector right now to make changes in this vector you need to pass it by reference why is that see when you pass it by value you will not end up making changes in the same vector so in order to fill the vector as we traverse this function we have to pass it by reference this is like basic c++ concept i hope you know that if not let me know i will make another video on that okay 
so we are passing it by reference over here so that we can use it okay what else do we need to pass we need to pass the n value from where our values are going to start and from where it is going to end okay and now what else are we going to pass we are going to pass the value that we are dealing with right now the present value so i am going to call it present itself so that you know you understand what am i talking about and since we have decided that we are going to keep a flag that okay whether the value is decreasing or increasing let's have that let me call the flag as increasing flag so if it is decreasing i'll keep it false and if it is increasing then i'll keep it increasing let me quickly summarize so what are things do we need in our function first thing that we need is as the vector because we need to make changes to it so that is why we have passed it by reference second thing that we need is the n value from where our answer is going to start and where it is going to end then we need our present value that we are dealing with and then we need a flag to know that okay we are dealing with the first half or with the second half that is our value should decrease first and then increase right so are we dealing with the first half or the second half that is why we have passed this okay so now what do we do first thing that we will do is in our res we are going to push this okay see now again there are many ways to write this code and that's fine uh, basically if you are able to write your solution with one function and with one flag then you are good to go then after then what you should be trying to do is that you are going to do it without the flag which we will do after this okay so let's first write this code now that we have pushed our present value to our vector what are we going to do we are going to see whether we are dealing with the first half or the second half of the array so first let's say we are dealing with the second half second half meaning we are increasing right so if we are increasing then we are over here then what we are going to check we will first check have we we have we reached the end of the array okay so what we will do in that case sorry so what we will do in that case we will check that if present is equal to end that means that we have reached over here okay so what we will do we will just return from there because that is where we have to stop okay so this is one base condition that we have added now if it is increasing what is the other case that can happen then the other case is that is uh, what am i going to do i am going to call the helper with the res i am passing the vector what is the value that i am passing i am passing n itself and i am going to pass present plus n then i am going to make sure that okay the flag remains same let's understand this again so i am in the increasing part right now i am in the second half so what do i do i first pass a vector that okay you have to make changes in this i pass the value of n then the present value that was there i will increase it in said so suppose i was at 6 the next time i will send 11 6 plus 5 okay so the next time it will get added like that so we will keep adding like this okay and we are in the increasing flag otherwise when we are in the decreasing flag what happens like in increasing there were two conditions first was when you are increasing and the second one was when you have reached the end similarly in decreasing also there will be two conditions when you have not reached the end like you are on the way and when you have reached the end so how will we do that we will check that okay if present minus n is minus 5 is greater than 0 that means you can still go ahead what is the condition that present minus 5 should be greater than 0 if this is the case then what we can do we can still go ahead so we are going to call the helper function we are going to pass our vector and what value are we going to pass we are going to pass present minus 5 whatever value we were at suppose we were at 11 so we will pass 11 minus 6 okay so this is one way then after that what we will do we will pass the decreasing flag we will pass not of increasing or we can actually write just we we can write false because increasing actually means true so to keep it less confusing we can write true if it helps you you can write increasing not increasing it doesn't matter then what we are going to do we are going to write else part that means when you have reached this condition now that means that from here you have to start traversing back like till now you were in decreasing part now you have to start increasing so what you are going to do you are going to call helper for res n and you are still going to call for present minus 5 only and but the uh, flag that you are going to pass is true why is this think about it see this case actually means that you are at 1 right now so when we are at 1 we pass the value as 1 minus 5 which will be minus 4 but after this we know that we have to start increasing that is why we have passed true okay till here till we reached 1 we were passing false because we knew that okay value has to keep decreasing but once we reached 1 okay the value still reduces only we are still passing 1 minus 5 only but after this the value has to start increasing and that is why we have passed true i wanted to take more examples not just this one and 
try run it and see that okay how this is working draw the recursive tree draw the recursive stack and tell me that okay how is it working okay so we are done writing the recursive function let's quickly call it also from our function and see so we are calling helper we are passing our vector from where we have to make the changes the n value what will be the present value in the starting we are starting from n only so we are going to go like this and since we are passing the increasing flag so initially we have to start from decreasing so this works let's submit it and see okay now don't be happy that we have solved the question because the tricky part starts right now this is when i will come to know that okay you have understood recursion properly or not so now what we are going to do is we are going to remove this flag so we are going to start writing the code without this flag and also without this integer n value okay so you just need the present value and the vector and that is how i want you to write the recursive function pause the video and let me know whether you were able to write the code yourself or not it is extremely extremely similar to the code that we wrote yesterday if you understood that properly if you were able to write the recursive tree and stack of that properly if you understood the concept you should be able to do this yourself if not we will do it together don't worry so i am removing this code now and let's start with if condition so if our present value is less than or equal to 0 basically if i have reached this minus 4 in that case what i will do i will just push this value so rs dot push back i am going to push the present value and i am going to return from there itself okay so this is when i have to go back okay yes i am not passing the n value also so i would have started with n how am i going to do it now so what i am doing is actually this rs push back present i am going to do it over here then i am going to call the helper function i am just quickly writing the code and then we will discuss that okay why the code looks like this and then what am i going to do i am going to pass present minus 5 and then again i am going to pass this and that's it we are done and this is it we are done with the code now before i start explaining this code i want you to actually try writing the recursive tree and stack yourself and understand that okay why is this going to happen and were you able to write it yourself or not and were you able to understand it yourself or not let me know in the comments let's try understanding it together now okay let's visualize it i have written the code for you so initially the point value is say 11 okay we start from 11 so we call the helper function so we have basically pass 11 in the function we come over here is 11 less than or equal to 0 no so we come over here then what do we do we put 11 in our answer so suppose this is our answer we are putting 11 over here okay so we have put 11 then what do we do we call the function for f of 11 minus 5 so 11 minus 5 is what 6 and let's draw our stack also so initially there was f of 11 then we have called for f of 6 okay then what happens now the helper is called basically the function is called for 6 value so we come over here now the present value is 6 okay so are we in the condition no we are not so now we come over here what do we do we push the 6 value okay now that we have pushed the 6 value we again come over here and then we call the function for 6 minus 5 which is 1 okay now we have called the function again so f of 1 we are at then we check over here is the condition true no then what do we do we push the value 1 again now that we have pushed the value 1 what do we do now we call the function for 1 minus 5 which is basically minus 4 now we call for f of minus 4 since we call the function of minus 4 so we check over here that okay we are in this condition now so here we are going to push minus 4 and we are going to return from here so we have returned over here we have reached the base condition this is where our recursion is going to stop we are going to return from here so as soon as we return we deallocate the memory we are going back okay then what happens we are over here now okay we are come we have come out of this helper function as soon as we finish executing this helper function what happens this statement gets executed now what is this statement it is saying that push the value of present what was the value of present over here it was 1 that is why we are pushing the one again so basically what is happening that i am now pushing the values back while going back my recursive tree initially when i was coming down i was pushing the values in my vector now when i am going back also i will be pushing the values in the vector and that is why we are getting the values right now what will happen now we deallocate this we come out of this after pushing the value so we come out of this now again see f of 1 is done executing so we are over here now present value was what it was 
so that is why we'll end up pushing six and once we end up pushing six like once we are done with this we will deallocate the memory and we will go back similarly now present value will become 11 then we will deallocate the memory that is when our function will finish so i hope this visualization help you understand if not write the code yourself try debugging it try drawing the recursive tree and the recursive stack i hope you understood the problem properly let me know if not we will pick up more such questions don't worry at all just stay tuned just show up tomorrow okay see you tomorrow Tata.